Hello students, my name is Sis Benedicta Komba from the Faculty of Science, Technology and Environmental Studies. I'm the course instructor of OEV 107, General Biology. So this video will cover knowledge area 4 and it will focus on Kingdom and Maria. So let's begin with the characteristics. Characteristics of Kingdom and Maria. So member animals are multicellular organisms. That means they have many cells and their cells have been specialized to perform different functions. Another characteristic is that their bodies are composed of a group of cells which are organized into tissue, organ, and organ system. So their cells are organized into tissues, organ, and organ system. Another characteristic is they have a nucleus which controls all the activities of the cell, but they do not have cell walls. Also, they are heterotrophic. Animals cannot make their own food. They are not, they do not have a self-feeding mechanism and therefore they are heterotrophs. They depend on other organisms for food. Also, they show locomotion. Animals can move from one point to another. Locomotion is the movement of the whole body of an organism. So animals can move in search of water, food, shelter, habitat, and also mess. Another characteristic is that animals, they respond in appropriately with the changes in the environment. So they, they show, they, ask, they exhibit sensitivity. That means they respond quickly to the appropriate changes in the environment. Then we move to the criteria. Criteria for classification. Animals have been grouped into different phyla and classes based on different criteria. So these criteria are, the first one is body symmetry. Asymmetry means the animal has no particular symmetry, but also we have another type of symmetry, which is radial symmetry. In radial symmetry, an, uh, an animal is organized circularly, just like a wheel. So two identical halves are obtained, no matter how an organism is sliced longitudinally. So if an, in radially Animals, in animals with radial symmetry, if you cut an organism longitudinally, you will obtain two identical halves. Also, radial symmetry tend to be attached to the substrate. That means they, sessa, they are sessile. Sessile means they are immobile, they cannot move. So in animals with, by, with radial symmetry, they tend to be attached to the substrate and that means they are sessile, they cannot move. Another type of symmetry is bilateral symmetry. In bilateral symmetrical animals, they tend to have left and right halves, which are mirror images of each other. So only one longitudinal cut at the center of the animal will produce two equal halves. So in bilateral symmetrical animals, if you cut uh, an animal longitudinally at the center, you obtain two equal halves which are mirror. So they have top and down, that means dorsal and ventral, but also they have a front which is anterior and back which is posterior. The importance of bilateral symmetry is that it helps an animal to be very active and move forward at the anterior end. So it helps animals in seeking men, food, and also to avoid predators. All structures in animals are derived from gem layers. So the, the three layers 
are seen in most embryos. And organisms with only two layers, which means uh, the ectoderm and endoderm, have tissue level organizations. But animals with three gene layers, that means the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm have an organ level organization. The body cavities. So this is another criteria which is used to classify organisms into an animal kingdom. So for efficient organ system depend on the body cavity. For example, it helps in supporting organs, but also distributing materials, fostering complex development interactions, but also it allows expansions and sometimes lengthen the part, the portions of the digestive tract. There are, the, for, for example, the lengthening of the portion of the digestive tract. If the digestive tract is lengthened, it means an animal can eat a large amount of food, especially when it is safe to do so, and therefore it can stay a long period of time without food. During which process, during the process of digestion, yeah, which takes longer, an animal can hide, especially for those animals which are prey for other animals, and therefore it helps an animal to defend itself against the predators. Also, it provides spaces within the gonads. The gonads are the ovaries and testes, and therefore leading to accumulation of large numbers of eggs and sperm. So, body cavity, which are found in bilateral symmetrical animals. The first one is acelomates. In acelomates, they do not have a body cavity. But also, another cavity is pseudocelomate. In pseudocelomate, these animals have a body cavity which is called pseudocele, which is located between the mesoderm and the endoderm. And the last one is celomates. In animals with, with in, in celomates, they have fluid, which is filled fluid filled body cavity, which is called celom, and it is developed within the mesoderm. So that is body cavity. Another criteria which is used to classify animals under different phyla and classes is segments. So this is the third key transition of the animal body plan, and during animal early development, segments become most obvious, especially in the mesoderm, but later on they are reflected in the ectoderm and endoderm. There are advantages of segmentations. Segmentations help in the development of complete set of an organ system, for example in annelids. Annelids have segmented bodies, but also they help in locomotion. An organism becomes more flexible, but also segmentation helps to specialization of parts, especially if each part is independent. So one part may specialize to perform one function, and another part may specialize to perform a, another function as, as well. So that is uh, advantages of segmentation. Also, another criteria is the neutrostome and protostome development. So,
area asymmetrical. And the sub-kingdom you may say as well, this, this sub-kingdom consists of all symmetrical animals and possess tissues. So the traditional system grouped animals into two, the parazoa and the eumetazoa. So the parazoa consisted of animals which lack symmetry, means they are symmetrical animals, and subkingdom eumetazoa, which consists of the symmetrical animals and those which possessed tissues. Then we move to phylum porifera. And a representative organism under this phylum are the sponges. And the, in the earliest classification system, these were grouped under parazoa. So the name sponges comes from their ability to absorb water from the surrounding. So the sponges have many pores. Their, their bodies have many pores, and therefore they absorb a lot of water from their surrounding, and that's why they are called sponges. And so the sponges belong to phylum porifera. Porifera comes due to the presence of many pores in their bodies. The sponges have many pores in their bodies, and that's why their phylum is called phylum porifera. Characteristics of phylum porifera, they are sessile as adults. The adult sponges are immobile, they cannot move. Also, they contain specialized cells, but do not have tissues. So they have specialized cells. Their cells are specialized to perform different functions, by, but they do not form tissues. They are, they are asymmetry. That means their bodies do not have a particular symmetry. So they are asymmetrical animals. Also, their bodies have many pores for water circulation. So water enters through the body of the sponges through the pores. Their body cavity is sporocyl and they have only two layers. That means the ectoderm and the endoderm, which are separated by a jelly-like material. Also, they have flagellated cells, which are the coanocytes, which are in line with the internal body cavity. So here is the body structure of a sponge. So these are pores. We say the body of the sponges consists of many pores, and that's why their phylum is called phylum porifera. So these are the pores which water pass through the body of the sponges through the pores. And also this is water flow water flow into the body of the sponges through the pores, and this is the flagella. Flagella help to drag food that comes in with water, but also we have, these are the pores which are created by porocytes, the amebocytes, which are the cells which, are, which help in feeding, we'll see in the next slide, but the spicules, these are star-like hard structures, and the seal, which is the body cavity of the sponge, the coanocytes, which are in contact with the amebocytes. So the coanocytes and the amebocytes, these are the cells in the sponges, which help in feeding, we'll see in the next slide. And also, yeah, so this is the, the osculum. Osculum, this is the gap at the top of the structure. So the water that comes in through the body, through the pores into the body of the sponges. So the osculum, the excess water and excess food leaves the body of the sponges through the osculum, this gap here. So that is the structure of a sponge. Then we move to, then we move to the feeding mechanism. The feeding mechanism in sponge. Sponges are filter feeders. They are called filter feeders because they filter food from the water that comes in into their bodies through the pores. So they remove the food from water as it is brought in through the pores. And the flagella, which pulls in bacteria, protozoa, and algae, which stick to the color of the coanocytes where it is digested. The amebocytes. The amoebocytes in sponges are specialized cells that help 
to pick up food from the coanocytes and distribute it to different parts of the body of the sponge. So the amigocytes also transport carbon dioxide and other waste away from the sponge cell. So the amigocytes in sponge perform two functions. One is to distribute food that comes in with water to different parts of the body of the sponge, but also it transports carbon dioxide and waste away from the sponge cells. Reproduction. Sponges reproduce both sexually and asexually. So asexual reproduction in sponge, sponges can reproduce asexually by, sponges can reproduce asexually by external buds that break off to form new sponges. They form gamules. These gamules are structures which are formed by sponges asexually and they are formed when the conditions are harsh so that they can survive. It's like a defensive mechanism. So the sponges can also reproduce asexually by generating missing parts or new sponge can form from a small piece of the sponge. So that is asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. Sponges are hermaphrodites. That means they have male and female organs, so they produce both eggs and sperms. They exchange sperms and cross-fertilize eggs during sexual reproduction. So after a zygote is formed, it develops into a flagellated free-swimming larva called the planula. So in larva form, the sponges, when it is in the stage of the larva, it is free-swimming because it, it, it has flagella and therefore it can swim. But as we have already seen in the characteristics of the sponges, the adults are sessile, they cannot move, they are immobile. So the larva of the sponge is called planula. And the larva settles at the bottom and attaches to develop into an adult sessile sponge. So once the larva is formed, because it has a flagella, it swims to the bottom and it, attach, it attaches itself until it develops into an adult sessile sponge. So that is a sexual, sexual reproduction. Mm -hmm. Classification of sponges. There are four classes of sponges and these are class Calvaria. These are two sponges in cash and spigules. Another class is class Exactinella. This includes the black sponges and the venous flower acids with silica spigules. Another class is class Epospongiae. This includes the only and black sponges with only spongy or spongy and silica spigules. Also, the last class is class Sclerospongiae. This includes the four sponges and have spongy and silica and calcium carbonate species. So that is classification of sponges. Then we move to the economic importance. The models depend on them for their diet. So the models feed on sponges, so they depend on sponges for, for food. Crystal cells also need a parasitic life on the sponges, that is another economic importance. Also, they serve as protective houses for fish, mollusks, and crystal cells. So, sponges act as a shelter, protective houses for fish, mollusks, and crystal cells. The dry sponges are used for bathing, power washing, water, and more spreading. So that is another economic importance. Also, some skeleton of sponges are used as decorative pieces, so they are used as decoration. The skeleton of sponges are used for decorations. Then we move to another sub-kingdom, Radiata or Sea animal, the corals, and the temples. So, classification. Ranganta includes two fibers. The first one is fibro medallia, and the second fibro is fibro telophora. So, the ranganta has two fibro, two fibro, fibro 
sensation that means it is related to sound. Also, the epidermis has the epidermis has the sensation that was in monogenium to the other, the solar and sun to the other. The vascular system of the mesonemal origin. So the, the vascular system or related to the mesonem and in form of a sheet of cellular, continuum and only layers within the epidermis. They do not have internal body symmetry. They do not have internal body space and that's why they are called asymmetrics. The epidermis system is incomplete, that means it is that's the vascular type and the epidermis system is also absent in some medallions. The epidermis system consists of the thermal of arterial diameter with continual neck parts. There are single cells on us and eye spots in sun. The experimental system of two lateral canals with branches which bear flat cells and lack in some forms. So the lack also that respiratory, circulatory and skeletal systems. The eight channels with three cells in some triathlons. Most forms are moraceous. Moraceous means the male and female organs can be found in all the same individual. The respiratory system is complex and usually with well developed organs. Ducks and accessory plants, they have internal fertilizations and the life cycle is simple in three streaming forms and those single host. The complicated life cycle often includes several hosts in, in some uh, invented internal parasites. The plants to, to the other are mostly the green living. So all the ones which are found in the last the are living. The remaining are parasites. The parasitic ones include the plasmodogenia, the trematoria, and the cestoria. These are entirely parasitic. So the classification, the class, the first class is class to the other. A good example is the Lugasia, which is commonly known as Canaria. My most and Pamusera. Another class is Plasmodoma, which includes the Plasmodoma, Chloroquis, and Stisostrom. The third class is Plasmodoma, which includes the Dimonobotria, Hymenolepsis, and Tyrion. Tyrion, this is the way that is found in this and four. Another class is Plasmodogenia, examples are Plasmodogenus, Polystopia, and Gyrodactylus. So this is the classification. Then we move to the economic importance. Some platforms, economic importance of Plasmodogenus. Some platforms are very important platforms of humans and domestic animals. So they are platforms that is the cause domestic animals. Examples of groups that affect humans are and domestic animals are the black groups, which are chisostopal species, the Chinese liver group, the land groups, also the human groups, which are basilar species, and sheep liver group, which are basilar hepatica. Also the certain common sectors which affect Humans, so there is a limited one which is Tyra Salinata. It is found in beef. If you do not cook your meat properly, then you will get Tyra Salinata in cows. And four, this is the fourth type of infection is called the Tyra Soda. So if you, don't, if you do not cook your meat properly, you will get these two pathogenic. Friends. Then we move to another group, the pseudocellulites, nematodes. The phylogenetoda, pseudocell, which is located between the mesoderm and the endoderm. So, characteristics. They are, they are body, uh, 
which is metanephridia, and which is opening into the mantle cavity. Then we move to economic importance. A group as large as mollusks, mollusks would naturally affect humans in some way. So a wide variety of mollusks are used as food. Pearls, both natural and cultured, are produced in the shells of clams and oysters, and most of them are in marine oysters and are found around the Eastern Asia. Some mollusks are destructive. That means they are the burrowing sheep, the burrowing sheep ones, which are by valves of several species, do great damage to wooden sheep and wags. So the mollusk which burrow in sheep, they do a great damage to the sheep. The snails and slugs often damage gardens and other vegetation, so they are very destructive to vegetation. And many snails ser serve as intermediate hosts for serious parasites. So the snail hosts several parasites, and a certain boring snails, the oyster grill, the rival sisters in destroying the oysters. So these are the serious parasites which the snails are their hosts. So in parasitism there is a host in one hand and a parasite. So the snails which are act as host for serious parasites. The enormous variety, great beauty and availability of shells of mollusks have made a shell collecting a popular hobby. So many people use shell collecting as a hobby because of these mollusks. So the, their shells are, are admired by many people and therefore it is the source, they, they, they form shells which are, can be found at the, at, the, at the beach. So it is a shell collecting is a popular hobby to, to many people. Then we move to another group of eucylomates, the annelids, the characteristics. Their body are metamelically segmented and bilateral symmetrical. So their bodies have segments and they are bilateral symmetrical animals. That means if you cut an annelid longitudinally at the center, you have then two equal halves which are mirror images of each other. Their body walls have outer circular and inner longitudinal muscle layers. The outer transparent most cuticle, which is secreted by the epithelium. They have chitinous status, which is often present on flesh appendages, which are called parapodia, and seta is absent in leeches. The stilon, which is well developed and divided by sector, except in leeches. The stilonic fluid supplies turgidity and function as hydrostatic skeleton. So the blood system is closed and segmentary arranged. The digestive system is complete and not metamerically arranged. So, so the digestive system is complete but is, it, it does not form segments. Respiratory gas exchange occurs through the skin, gills, or parapodia. The excretory system, typically a pair of nephridia for each metamere. The nervous system has a double ventral nerve cord and a pair of ganglia with lateral nerves in each metamere. A brain and a pair of cerebral ganglia with connective, connectives to cord. The sensory system has sensory system of tactile organs. 
the test birds. Statistic in some and photoreceptors. The photoreceptor cells are cells which respond to light and they have eyes with lenses in some. So some have eyes with lenses. Also, some are hermaphroditic or separate sexes. Larva, if present, are trochophore type and asexual reproduction is by budding in some and spiral and mosaic cleavage. So those are the characteristics of the anemone. You see all that? Then we move to classification. There are different classes. The first one is class Polychaeta. Examples are Mary, Aphrodite, Glycera, the Arenicola, and Chaetotelsans, and Amphitrite. So these belong to class Polychaeta. Another class is class Oligochaeta, and examples include the Lumicus, the Stylaria, Ilocema, and Tube Sex. And the last one is class Hirudinea. Examples include the Hirudo, Placobella, and Macrobella. So those are the classification of the anemones. So economic importance of anemones. Much of the economic importance of anemones is indirect. That means deriving from their ecological roles. So many members uh, serve as prey for other organisms of no direct interest to humans, for example, the fishes. So people use anemones as fish baits so that they can catch fish. So that is the economic importance. So the economic importance to humans is indirect because humans use them as bait for fish. Also, anemones normally burrow in the soils. So the burrows which are created by the earthworms increase the drainage and aeration of the soils. And also, as the anemones migrate in the soils, they help in mixing the soil and distribute organic matter to deeper layers in the soil. Some marine anemones that burrow also serve as um, an allotted lower role in the sea. Lagoons, for example, are in Nicola, are sometimes called the aquins of the sea. So they, 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 they perform the same role in the sea that is performed by the aquins, the common aquins. So the new medical use of leeches have revived the market in the blood sucking leeches and are established as leech farms where these organisms are raised in captivity. Then we move to another group of eucinomates, and here we are talking about the arthropods. So the arthropods have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry means that if you cut an arthropod longitudinally at the center, you obtain two equal parts. So metameric body can matter the head and trunk, head, thorax, and trunk thorax, abdomen, or cephalothorax, and abdomen. They have jointed appendages, their limbs are jointed, they form joints. Previously, one pair to each somite, which is sometimes called a metamere, but number often reduced, appendages are often modified for specialized function. So, the segmentation the, the, the appendages, the, the segmentation helps in specialization of different functions. The cuticle exoskeleton, they contain protein, lipid, chitin, and often calcium carbonate, which is secreted under, by underlying epidermis, and, and then it is shed, molted at intervals. So they have complex muscular system, with exoskeleton for attachment. And they have striated muscles for rapid action, smooth muscles, and visceral organs, but they do not have cilia. Also, arthropods have reduced cilum. Most of the body cavity consists of homocils, which is filled with blood. They have complete digestive system, 
malpas which are modified from the appendages and are adapted for different feeding methods. They have open circulatory system with dorsal contractile heart, arteries and hemocells. Their respiration is by body surface, gills or trachea, which are the air tubes, or bulk lungs. They have paired excretory glands called coxo. They have antenna or maxillary glands which are present in some, some arthropods, and some with other excretory organs, for example, the malphigian tubules. Their nervous system is similar to the annelid gland with dorsal brain which is connected by a ray around the gallet of the but, uh, uh, around the gallet to a double nerve chain of ventral ganglia. So fusion of ganglia in some species are well developed sensory organs. The sexes are usually separate, that means the male and female sexes are found in different individuals, cannot be found in the same organism. So they have paired reproductive organs and that, and usually they have internal fertilization. So fertilization occurs inside their body. They are oviparous, that means they produce young by hatching. They, they produce young by the eggs which are hatched after being laid or oviparous ovoviviparous, that means they, they, they produce young by laying eggs which are hatched within their bodies and often with metamorphosis. Parthenogenesis, that is reproduction without fertilization occurs in few forms and growth, growth is with ecdysis. The ecdysis means that they shed the outer cuticle. Then we move to the economic importance of arthropods. Arthropods are necessary for cross-pollination. So cross-pollination occurs where pollen from one plant is transferred to, to the stigma of another plant. So the arthropods act as the the arthropods help them carry the, 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 the pollen from, from the anchor of one plant to a stigma of another plant. So some insects also produce useful materials. For example, bees produce honey and wax. The silk, which is produced from silkworms and shellac, from wax, which is secreted by a lack insect. Many predaceous insects, such as tiger beetles, the aphid lion, the praying mantis, and ladybird beetles, these destroy harmful insects. So some predation insects help in destroying the harmful insects by eating them. Some insects also control harmful ones by parasitizing them or laying eggs when, where they are young, when hatched and then they are consumed by the host. Also, some insects destroy plants and fruits, such as grasshoppers, corn borers, ball weavers, and rain weavers. These are very destructive to plants and fruits. Also, humans expend enormous resources in agricultural activities, in forests, and in food industry to counter insects and the damage they cause. So they cause a lot of damage that cause humans a great that cost human a, a lot of money in agricultural activities for us but also in food industries but also lice blood sucking flies water flies moth flies and many other attack humans or domestic animals or both so there are certain types of anthropods which are very harmful to humans and domestic animals, or both humans and domestic animals. Hand flies are vectors. Vectors means they carry 
pathogens or disease causing organisms from the 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 the, the, the pathogens. For example, house flies are vectors of typhoid and cholera. So house flies can carry bacteria that causes typhoid. So also cholera, Vibrio cholera, the house fly are the vectors for cholera and typhoid. So pepe flies also carry African sleeping sickness and certain blood sucking bugs. Rodmias and related genera also transmit Chagas disease. The Chagas disease is American tra trypanosomiasis. Another word for a Chagas disease is American trypanosomiasis. Also, another economic importance of arthropods is that there is tremendous destruction of food, clothing, and property by weavers, cockroach, they destroy. They, they, they destroy clothes and clothes smoke, termites and carpet beetles. These are very destructive to food, clothing and property. So that